Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? It's a sort of a still, it's like, look, I've got to get rid of that bonfire. It's still a slightly cold morning. The windy bends are shut. They've been shut for a week. So I've got to go down the bypass. He's got a brake light missing. Oh, come on. I hope you're parked there because honestly, this car is so small, you do not need to wait for me. I mean, I know you've got a Land Rover. He was waiting for me. Can you believe that? He was waiting for me. Unbelievable. So they've done a load of hedge trimming down here. You can see, look, see the hedge on the left-hand side looks very smart. My hedge doesn't look very smart. I'm going to have to ring up uh, my local hedge trimmers and ask if they'll trim the hedge. I know the bloke who did that. The bloke who did that is the bloke who knocked down my hedge. I'll show you a picture of my hedge. This lorry just turning right when it, when it couldn't turn right, just walked all over my hedge. Twenty years of careful mowing, getting lines, you know, sight lines, getting it dead straight and everything, and then the lorry just comes and just takes it all out. And I said to him, "Can you straighten it up?" And uh, they're not bothered. So I've had to make a claim on my house insurance and they've said that I won't have to pay an excess because um, I've got the details of the firm that uh, caused the problem. They're an Italian firm, Salva, Salva Alvi or something they're called. Anyway, they deliver apple trees. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, we grow apples in this country and yet when they want to buy apple trees they buy them from Italy. Anyway I've got quite a nice day today. I've done a bit of um, more by mistake than anything I just clicked on the analytics tab of my YouTube because you know I've uploaded three YouTubes recently that I uh, haven't had time to upload and I've got my usual 35 views, which is, you know, for this is the niche of a niche, this channel, so I'm not at all bothered about how many views I get. 35 is better than 25, I suppose, and not as good as 45, but I can't, for the life of me, imagine why 35 people would want to listen to this, unless they're really in a parallel universe, you know, also driving to to uh, surgery and in general practice in the UK. So, I think probably 33 of those are bots. Because there are probably 33 bots all over the world that just tune into every new YouTube video and just do some AI analysis on it and just see uh, you know what, what it's about and so and that fits in with the average viewing time because the average viewing time is about a minute and a half I mean and as you can probably tell we've been going well we've been going at least a minute and a half and I haven't even got into the, what I'm going to talk about yet so any bot that tunes in and listens for a minute and a half to see what it's about and then tunes out again is not really gonna not really gonna get an idea, are they? So oh I need to turn the heating up a bit. This is a bit that's better. So I've got a I've got a nice easy day today because um, there's not much pressure on the time today because we had a woman booked in to do a denture in a day. And she rang so many warning bells and waved so many red flags that I rang her up and told her not to come in. Which was 
and I'll just take you through them because there there are a few uh, and uh, there's about I've got about 12 or 15 warning flags you know and uh, the ones she rang were she um, she rang up and said well funnily enough I got another woman coming in today and I can t she wants dentures and she texted me and said like I'd like to come in for a free consultation about dentures and I said, we don't do, uh, what you want isn't free. You don't want a consultation. You, you want a examination, diagnosis and treatment plan and quotation. And I said, that's 78 quid. So she's like, oh, well, no, but you say on your website that you give away free consultations and it's no, there's no hard pressure sales, you know. And I thought, we, we haven't got the words hard or pressure or sales on our website. So... She's starting to. You're starting to think oh, this woman's seeing things through her own filter, isn't she? She's only, she's only seeing what she wants to see, as Harry Nielsen would say. And uh, she's hearing what she wants to hear. And I sort of know the bit that she's referring to. The bit says that we do free consult, we do free second opinions, right? And then basically, what that means is if you've been to a dentist and they've given you a written treatment plan and you want a second opinion on it, then if you bring that treatment plan to us, then we will tell you whether we agree with it. Now, uh, this doesn't happen much, um, but it has several advantages for us. One is it sort of sets us up as, as a sort of a, uh, not an expert opinion, if GDC's listening. No, it's not, I'm not saying I'm an expert opinion, I'm just saying, it just sets us up as being qualified to express a, an opinion on another dentist's work, which we do on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. We don't do it as an expert. We just say, look, you've had one general dentist's opinion and now have another den general dentist's opinion, see if we agree. And it's free of charge, so really you've got nothing to lose, have you, money-wise, bit of time, obviously, and then you have to... Now, it is conditional on you having a quote and and sending us the quote because we can't comment on something which is you know I've been to a dentist and he's told me I need to have this tooth out and I said a dentist what do you think that's not really that's basically that it involves us doing a whole complete new examination diagnosis treatment plan and quote so but unfortunately d dentists who are not like us think it's pretty savvy not to write too much down and um, certainly the dentist I bought my practice off had this rule that you had to have everything on one sheet of paper otherwise the patients wouldn't read it or understand it and I've seen one sheet quotes from him for in excess of £30,000 worth of work and we used to have a friendly disagreement over this I, I said to him like you have to give the patients more information. It's in your interest to give the patients more information than you're giving them. Because, um, not that it saves you because of the, the corruption of the, 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 the way that the legal profession has corrupted the complaints process. But certainly you're um, in a better position to uh, fight off any uh, frivolous or vexatious claims if you can say, if you can, you know, say that all oh, this was included in the quote. So like, take for example, you do a root treatment and the patient has some post-operative sensitivity and they come back and then there's always like, there's possible implication that, you know, perhaps you've cocked out the root filling or uh, it should never have been done in the first place or it's all gone horrendously wrong. Um, and if you can say to the patient, look, you know, this is not usual, but it's certainly not unheard of, and if you read the quote, you'll notice that we have got a paragraph in there saying that you might get some post-operative sensitivity. And then, um, you know, the patient will say, oh, well, I didn't read the quote, but, you know, fair enough. So, um, and some uh, times we have had to copy and paste bits from the quote back to patients and say, look, you know, this was, this was, you were warned about this. This is something that you should have taken into account when doing your due diligence about whether or not to proceed I mean like things like for example we say that you can't we can't re you can't reject a denture simply on the grounds that you 
you don't think you can wear it you know you don't feel that you're uh, suitable for dentures anymore you know you, you thought you'd try one but now you, you decided you don't like it you can't just reject it on the grounds that you simply don't like it and then the other advantage to us of doing these second opinions is that um, obviously we, we do get a good um, bit of intel on the sort of quotes that dentists are giving you know it, it, even from the mundane like are they in a cardboard folder like an estate agent or are they uh, are they done on a dot matrix printer do they have charts do they have diagrams do they have references do they have QR codes and also we get to look at their fees you know what are they charging you know if someone because these guys are direct competitors of ours if they go to the Jap down the road with uh, the problem that we're able to examine in their mouth what is the guy down the road expected to charge them for that and um, I mean we're going through a period at the moment where uh, certain types of treatment are non un, unremunerative non remunerative and root fillings is the typical example and the, you know my new rule of dentistry is that um, if a dentist tells you that you something's not possible then it usually means that he just doesn't want to do it um, so where we disagree with other dentists it's not so much that um, we they say the patient needs four fillings and we think they need five fillings or vice versa <coughs> it's more where the patient's been told that they need to have an extraction and a bridge or, or a, an implant and then we say no there's no reason why you shouldn't have this tooth root filled you know, and we have had patients very recently who've been told they need to have their teeth root filled um, because there's not enough of the tooth left and, and there's almost all of the tooth left. We just don't understand it. I mean, I've root filled teeth and crown teeth that were literally concave in the gum. So I don't, honestly, I don't, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's a dentist who just doesn't want to do that work, right? not it's not anything to do with the teeth and so what you can do is you can so you then you're in the difficult situation of saying well I would imagine that they probably can't do this sort of work whereas we can you know you can't say uh, that clinically you're being misadvised although I, I have no fear of saying that somehow but but by saying you know they said they can't root treat this tooth we say we can there's an element of both, isn't there? There's an element of possibly they have a, like a skill or possibly they have an aversion to doing a job or possibly they've just, um, you know, the treatment plan is not, it wouldn't, wouldn't be supported by most, most dentists. Anyway, um, the other thing, of course, is that uh, almost always by the time someone decides to bring you a quote from someone else um, they've pretty much decided that they will come to you if you make a better fist of explaining what needs to be done and your prices are at least comparable um, you know they are it's your chance to sort of uh, shine in terms of the patient's expectations whereas the original dentist probably just saw that patient as one of an endless stream of new patients who just needed a, 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 a quick you know explanation of what they wanted to do plus a plus a quote on the basis you know they'll blunderbuss approach that you issue 10 quotes and <clears throat> two of them will come in as patients but we try very hard to get every every uh, <clears throat> every patient every potential patient as a patient so this woman, woman who's coming in and said she wanted a free quote and I said, look, no, this is not really... Although we say that we do do free um, second opinions, this is not what you want as a second opinion. You're, you're, or a chat, a chat. We do like a free chat. If someone just wants to say, look, I'm thinking of having dentures. How do they work? Then we'll have a chat with them over the desk. They never get near the chair. We don't charge for that. Um, but 
you know, you tend to realise that what these people want ultimately is examination, diagnosis, treatment plan, quote. But what they do is they just try it on. They're just like, oh, but can I get this under your free second opinion scheme? You know, can I save myself the money? Which is silly because, you know, you're talking about a set of dentures that's going to cost them over a grand. And they're trying to save 78 quid. It's just, you know, but people are like that. They will just try it. They will just try it. Well, they don't know they're going to have the dentures, I suppose, at that point. So they're like, well, I'd rather, I'll, I'll come and try them out. And if I can try them out for nothing. Now, we used to do free checkups. And um, we gave it up in the end because um, we, we had a, we had a ton of people come in who just had a checkup and nothing else. And that baffled me because I couldn't understand why anyone would was just want to come in for a checkup and then not have the treatment done. But then it uh, dawned on me that uh, a checkup in itself has some value, you know. People who suspect that their teeth are in a state do benefit from um, having somebody qualified look at them and do a... Do a 80 pounds worth of diagnosis and treatment planning, uh, even if they then don't have the work done. And uh, for the reassurance at least, you know, I mean, we had somebody in yesterday who's 30 years old, hadn't been in since she finished her orthodontics, by which time, you know, she must have been about 15 or something, had got toothache and, um, and really didn't know what to expect, was really expecting to be told that she needed to have all her teeth out. Whereas in fact, all she needed was an occlusal um, composite and um, in a worst case scenario, it might need root filling, but um, it's just literally one tooth and a scale and polish, you know, gen a general scale and polish. So for her, the relief of just knowing what was wrong was, was worth the 78 quid we charged her for the checkup. She went away very happy hearing that she might need a root filling. So anyway, so this woman's coming in and <clears throat> she wrote us this very confused email saying, oh, well, you know, well, in that case, don't bother. In that case, don't worry. And I interpret that to mean, in that case, don't bother. I'm not coming in, you know, don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'll go somewhere else where I can get a free checkup. But in fact, what she meant was in that case, don't don't worry about the 78 quid. I'm happy, I'll happily pay it. So she's coming in. The woman we had to get rid of was um, uh, emailed us and uh, emailed us a lot and some very, very long. She started emailing me while I was on holiday in Africa. And, uh, you know, I said to her, I'm on holiday in Africa at the moment, so I can only sort of give general answers to your inquiries. And, um, and she was like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you're on holiday in Africa, obviously. and, and uh, I'll talk to you when I get back. And then the next day we get another email. Oh, and by the way, but could you just let me know, blah, blah, blah. Now, we, we told her that we could make dentures for her. You know, in other words, that we could do the work that she was after, uh, solve her problem in, in sales terms. But she then used a phrase which I thought was very odd. And she said, um, you know, and I told her that um, <clears throat> we have this policy of paying in advance. You have to pay two days before the appointment is due. Otherwise, the appointment gets reallocated. That way we get our utilisation goes through the roof. We have no bad debts. And um, anybody who can't afford to come in or, or changes their mind about coming in doesn't end up with a, a failed appointment charge. And she's like, oh, well, she says, Don't, she says you won't have any trouble getting the money out of me, right? Uh, all I want is beautiful, well-fitting dentures, and then, you know, and I'll be happy. So that's two red flags, okay? Let me just tell you, first of all, if anyone says you won't have any trouble getting the money out of me, then run a mile. Because that means that they are, um, they see, see the money as very much conditional on, uh, that's what they're putting up. as they're, They see themselves as, let's say, they see themselves putting up only, only their side of the bargain, the money, right? Um, what we used to get was typically when we worked on the NHS was people used to say, oh, I forgot my wallet, um, I'll drop the money in. And, uh, you know, so when we said, well, when, when can we expect to get it? They, they wouldn't say, well, Friday or something. They would say, look, look, don't you worry. You won't have any trouble getting the money out of me, you know, and because it's like, <clears throat> I'm worth a few quid, you know? Uh, can hear a sign. 
And then, but then on the other hand, um, these people never came back. Never. I've never had anyone who said you'll never, you won't have any trouble, because they're practiced at uh, uh, running out on their on their debts, right? They're literally they've got the patter. That's the phrase they use, uh, because it's in it's intended to sort of pacify the victim. Your what they do when they leave through the door, you know, you can think to yourself, oh well, okay, now they should have paid that patient, but but I suppose they did say. <clears throat> They reassured me that I won't have any trouble getting the money out of them, so I'll give them a week, and then it's a week, and then it's another week, and then and then it's, you know, like three months later, you're in the small claims court because they're saying that the crown you did for them was a bit painful for a day or two. And the judge says, well, I don't see why they should have to pay for the crown because you, it was painful. And so you've done all that work for nothing. So that's why, that that's, that's a major red flag. And then the other thing is that, um, you know, they're just like, oh, I want beautiful, well-fitting dentures. Now, that's all I want. That's all I want, you know. I mean, I wish I could make beautiful, well-fitting dentures for everybody. If I make uh, comfortable dentures that look reasonable for everybody, I'm happy. Uh, but beautiful, well-fitting dentures, I mean, that's that just that form of words sends shivers down my spine. Because what that patient is saying to you is that I've got unrealistic expectations. I've got, and not only that, but I'm prepared to, I'm prepared to make a fuss if they don't fulfil. Because I said, I told you in advance I wanted that. I wanted beautiful, well-fitting dentures. And you didn't, they're not beautiful. They're not beautiful. I don't think they're beautiful. I don't get what you think. You know, the patient will say, I don't think they're beautiful. And they're not well-fitting because I can't chew anything with them. I can't, not I can't chew anything with them. I just can't chew everything with them. So, so there you are. So the patient is sort of advertising the fact that they're, they're a bit nutty. So then, <clears throat> but that in itself wasn't enough. It's still at that stage, I was still prepared to take her on. And then um, I got another email saying that uh, uh, regarding paying in advance, you know, um, I think it's a bit odd I do think it's a bit odd, and um, I've, my family uh, have said that, um, I, you know, obviously I, I'm, I'm sort of laying myself open to having paid in advance, um, then and then having to take on trust that you'll make me a beautiful, well-fitting set of dentures. That I might be an, I might be a, I might be an idiot. I forget what her exact name was. Foolish, she said. I might be, my family have said that I might be being foolish. <coughs> well, I mean, really, that's it. I mean, if somebody said that they, they're they worried about the, coming to you for a set of dentures, they might be being foolish, then really you're not, you're on hiding to nothing. So we, we really, these dentures were a failure, weren't they, right from the very start. So that's why I rang to, and then I said, look, I did. I did what I've criticised other dentists for doing, which is I've. I wrote a long letter. Telling her all about the fact that everybody has to pay in advance, and that I've been making dentures for forty-two years, and that if she's unhappy with the dentures, she's got a year to sort it out with me post fit, and then within a year she can still take it to the private patient complaints procedure. And that we're all, you know, we have all this postgraduate training, CPD, which is checked by the General Dental Council every five years, and uh, we've been uh, we're registered with the Care Quality Commission in terms of, and we got the highest mark, five stars for everything, and uh, and I put and I said to her like, you know, obviously, or none of she knew none of this, all the consumer safeguards that are available to her. <clears throat> Here we go again. So, but I've said, you know, but bearing in mind that you are, you know, you're, you've said that you're worried that 
you know, and obviously she's taking advice from her family, which is again is another red flag, you know, because how many times have I had a patient who's come in and had something done and have been very happy with it and then gone home and then one of the families said, oh, do you know, you could have got that, that exact same job, you could have got that exact same job done for one tenth of the price on the NHS, you idiot. And they're made to be embarrassed and feel foolish uh, because, you know, they've been told that they've made a stupid mistake, an egregious error. And, and spent a lot of money, wasted a lot of money, going to see a private dentist or something they could have had done for next to nothing. <clears throat> so families, again, they're not all that helpful, you know? I mean, I've made dentures for people. I've gone ho at people's homes and made home, uh, dentures for, at home for people. Who've, and, and uh, the trying stage, we've signed them off and they said, yeah, I love them, I love them, I love them. And then we get back to work and then within a day or two, we get a... Um, a phone call from a daughter, for example, saying, you made my dad dentures, they look horrendous, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, well, he said they look great and that's how he wanted them, and that's how we made them, you know. <clears throat> Families are not helpful. I mean, having said that, I mean, I have got some patients who's, you know, like I've got a lovely old lady with dentures whose son is very helpful, who brings her in and you know and sorts her out and everything. And but they're the ones that tend to come along to the surgery. The family that aren't helpful are the ones that just stay at home and <clears throat> and are like uh, armchair critics of what's been going on in the surgery. So anyway, so that's why she's not coming in, and so obviously we're out the best pass of a thousand quid, but I think the way you've got to look at this is this. If I'd made her a set of dentures today when we charged her a thousand quid or whatever, and then what would happen was she'd come back for an adjustment, and then she'd come back with or without a bit of dremeling by somebody, and then she'd come back for another adjustment, and then, um, you know, she'd start to say, well, these dentures are not really um, I'm not very happy with them, and so what you're, you're, there's a good chance you're going to have to refund that thousand pounds. So what you, it's not like I've lost a thousand pounds today. I'm neutral. This patient has not acknowledged the <coughs> the effort and the laboratory costs and everything that we put in. She's only interested in the thousand pounds she puts in. She's not interested in what we're going to commit in terms of surgery time staff wages materials and labs she doesn't care see that at all she doesn't see it as a she just sees it for a thousand pounds off for her for a set of dentures that we probably make for nothing <clears throat> so and and if we're gonna have to refund a thousand pounds anyway then what's the point what's the point of making a set of dentures and charging a thousand pounds and then and then <clears throat> her mailing the mailing the dentures back and us giving her a thousand pound back. Well, it was, I'd rather I'd rather have a cup of coffee. Do you know what I mean? Because that's a loss, isn't it? If you've paid the lab bill and the staff and the, and taken the surgery time and then you have to refund the money and all you've got is a used set of dentures, there's or or a big legal case, you know, a load of legal problems, then why bother? Why bother? But perhaps I'll um, go through my red flags again, just to help you decide, you know, for yourself, whether you want to adopt any, because I tell you, they've uh, helped me dodge a bullet over the years. Anyway, got to go. Talk to you soon. Bye.